Snow Tracks is sponsored by Skidoo Snowmobiles. Experience that Skidoo feeling. Yamaha revs your heart. And by FXR Racing. Maximum versatility for all conditions. Despite it not being the largest segment in the industry by far, the crossover segment generates a disproportionate amount of interest from us in the media and from you as a consumer as well. My analysis of this situation has led me to believe that at least part of this interest stems from the fact that at its most basic level, a snowmobile is a vehicle designed to appeal to our most basic instinct to explore our surroundings. And the crossover snowmobile more specifically appeals to our love of things that offer a heightened level of versatility. No one wants just a coffee maker. We want a coffee maker that grinds the beans, makes espresso and steams milk. We don't just want a sled that lets us explore groom trails. We want one that lets us explore off-trail, backcountry, and deep snow areas. The crossover segment has been, in my opinion, wrought with misrepresentation since its beginning, though. I firmly believe a crossover can't simply be a mountain sled with a trail seat or a trail sled with a deep paddle. Either of these two setups will result in a sled that is vastly better at one discipline than the other, therefore defeating the versatility of the category. We gotta give credit where it's due. You can't deny that the first crossover sled in the industry was Skidoo's original Renegade Backcountry. But as anyone who watches Snow Tracks knows, we make no bones about our belief that for the last few seasons, the Polaris Assault has been the literal definition of what a crossover should be, blending near trail sled trail performance with near mountain sled off-trail capabilities. This season, the rest of the industry seems to be catching on and have all come to the party with their own versions of what they think a true crossover should be. And for the first time, it seems that they're all shooting for that 50-50 designation. I think what's of utmost importance for today, though, is that we take the time to figure out which of the industry's top crossover sleds is the best in terms of being great both on and off trail. Our contestants today are Skidoo's Backcountry XRS 850, Yamaha's Sidewinder XTX LE, Polaris's Switchback Assault 850, and Arctic Cat's Riot 800. As I said earlier, the Assault is the literal definition of a 50-50 crossover. It's got a trail front end that's 42 inches wide. Its trail seat and slightly taller bars make for a fantastic ergonomic package, both sitting and standing. And Polaris's IGX 144 skid frame is the shortest of this bunch, but only by two inches. I've been told that two extra inches doesn't actually make that much of a difference at least not when it comes to snowmobile skid frames. A 1.6 inch paddle in a 144 inch length really is more than enough to get you anywhere you might wanna go, especially when paired with that awesome 850 twin under the hood. If you've ridden a Polaris 850 and you don't think it's the most impressive two-stroke snowmobile motor ever made, you need to go get yourself some counseling. But I think what's most impressive about the Switchback Assault, and we've discussed this many times in the past, is that it really doesn't require any compromises at all. On the trail, it's every bit as good as any trail sled, in fact, better than most. Yet off trail, it's uncannily capable and easy to ride. It really doesn't matter who buys an Assault, it's gonna do what they want and do it well. The new Backcountry XRS is really just a variation of the original Backcountry. The platform underneath it all is exactly the same as the Backcountry X, just with more stuff. It is interesting to note though, that when Skidoo started the project to build the Backcountry X, they started with a blank canvas, opting to design both a skid frame and front suspension setup that are hybrids between trail and mountain. Out back, the C-Motion skid frame draws more of its lineage from the trail, but definitely still has some mountain mixed in. With a 16 wide track and a 1.6 paddle, the Backcountry XRS has more flotation than any other crossover sled to date. 
It also rides pretty good on the trail as well. No, not as good as an R-Motion trail skid, but definitely not anywhere near as bad as a T-Motion mountain skid. The XRS's adjustable KYB Pro 40 series shock package does play a big role in this. Up front, a new version of Skidoo's RAS3 AA arm front suspension setup blends mountain arms with trail spindles. The ski stance is adjustable from 38 to 40 inches. And this is where I think Skidoo missed the mark with the Backcountry XRS. The idea was that the sled would handle like a trail sled, but be maneuverable off trail like a mountain sled. But only half of this is actually true. Thanks to the narrow ski stance, off-trail handling is definitely above average for a crossover, but it does come at the expense of on-trail handling. Ergonomically, the XRS is excellent both on and off the trail. The seat's a little bit on the short side, but it's still comfortable. The handle pull position is excellent for both sit-down and stand-up riding, and those extra-wide running boards offer almost unlimited foot placement options. You certainly can't say anything bad about Skidoo's familiar 850 E-Tech powerhouse under the hood, and we were very pleasantly surprised to see this model come equipped with their groundbreaking shot electric starting system. Up next in our crossover shootout is Arctic Cat's new for 2020 Riot 800. And this is a pretty interesting entry into the crossover market because Arctic Cat followed Polaris's blueprint for crossover success very closely. The Riot features a lengthened version of Arctic's slide action trail skid frame they have dubbed the Cross Action. Wrapped in a 146 by 16 paddle, this skid frame offers excellent deep snow traction and an on-trail ride that's as good, possibly even better, than a standard slide action equipped trail sled. Up front, the new ARS2 double arm setup is straight off a trail sled and is, without question, the best trail sled front end Arctic has ever made. Handling on the trail is excellent. Ride quality is also fantastic. But what's interesting about this front end is that despite it being 42 inches wide, it's still really good off trail. No, not as good as a mountain front end, obviously, but for a crossover, it works really well. Ergonomically, I have both praise and complaints about the Riot. The steering post, for example, is spot on. It blends a perfect balance between seated trail riding comfort and standing off trail maneuverability. The complaint I have is with the seat itself. This is a mountain seat, and while great for off-trail use, it's a very awkward seat for on-trail riding. Yamaha's Sidewinder XTX LE is obviously the most powerful of these four sleds, but more than that, it is the most powerful crossover sled ever built. With 180 plus ponies on tap, you will never have to worry about running out of power, but the XTX is more than just a great big motor. This is a really capable chassis both on and off the trail. Yes, its specifications in terms of front and rear suspension are identical to the Riot, so there's not much to say here that hasn't already been said in terms of on-trail ride quality, on and off-trail handling, and overall ergonomic comfort. Still, the Sidewinder XTX is a very different sled, in part because of the power, but also because of the extra weight that comes from throwing a three-cylinder turbocharged four-stroke under the hood. What's most important to understand about the XTX is that while it is definitely the heaviest of the four, the extra power it produces does help compensate for some of it. Off-trail, the Sidewinder uses track speed to get the nose up and keep itself moving in the really deep stuff. Now that we're all on the same page in terms of what these four sleds are, we need to see which one best represents what a crossover sled truly should be and see if any of them are capable of unseating the switchback assault from its throne of crossover perfection. The hybrid front and rear suspension systems on the Backcountry XRS leave it more biased to off-trail riding. This is not to say it's not a good trail sled. It definitely is, but it's not a great trail sled. If you're the type of crossover rider who spends most of your time off-trail, this is the right sled for you. The Sidewinder is an absolute beast of a snowmobile. It's shockingly fast and both rides and handles really well on the trail. Off-trail, it's more capable than any other crossover class Yamaha has ever been but you can't deny the extra weight it carries makes it a less maneuverable off-trail sled. If you're the type of crossover rider who does spend most of their time on the trail, I'm pretty confident in my opinion that the Sidewinder would be a really good choice for you. This leaves us with Arctic Cat's Riot and Polaris's Assault. On the trail, the Riot rides and handles as good as any Arctic Cat trail sled. Off-trail, it's light and maneuverable and can go just about anywhere. Ergonomically, it's good on the trail, but excellent off-trail. 
In my opinion, Arctic Cat's ride is the only new crossover sled that gets close enough to that 50-50 designation of on and off trail riding to give Polaris's Switchback Assault a real run for its money. The mountain seat is the only aspect of the ride I don't like, but the whole crew here at Snow Tracks agrees. Even with the mountain seat, it's a fantastic crossover. Yet the question still remains, is it good enough to unseat the Switchback? And the answer is that it's so close, but just not close enough. Switchback Assault is still the best crossover in the industry, for now. This season though, Arctic Hat has proven that they fully understand what crossover riders want and that they are fully capable of delivering it. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. Sled decks like this Marlon Explore Pro 2 are an incredible asset to your winter sledding experience. They allow you to haul two sleds on the back of your truck with all that cargo space in the box still available to you. But if I've heard one line once, I've heard it a dozen times. And that line is, isn't it hard to load those sleds? That's what I get asked all the time, and I want to properly clear this up because it's just not true. When you choose to buy a premium deck like the Marlon Explore Pro 2, you get a huge list of built-in safety and convenience features that truly makes the loading process easy and safe. Carrying one or two sleds in the back of your truck with all the bed cargo space still available sure does add significant value to your truck. And it uses an otherwise unused space, not to mention it looks incredibly cool, and it offers the convertibility of the easy to slide extendable deck arms that keep your truck at stock width when you're not carrying two sleds. And should you also have a side-by-side -side or ATV, yeah, you can use the deck for those as well. And even get a full width turbo four-seater up on there with the optional riser for your Marlon Explore Pro. How cool is that? One deck does all season sports. Now to show you that using a Marlon deck is user-friendly and intuitive, I've got the help of my wife, Lindsay, who has never used a sled deck before. She always lets me gear up the truck when we're going out for a ride. But today, I wanted to show her that using a Marlon deck is confidence inspiring. Right up front, the newly designed telescopic ramp features super clamp super glides in the wide design. So you get great traction, both the sled and your boots if you're walking up the ramp. The Explore Pro deck uses all kinds of super clamp products, and this is what really elevates the safety, confidence level, and convenience when loading or unloading your sleds. Okay, so Lens, remember, when you and I put this ramp onto the deck, there's little tabs up at the top that actually lock it on to the back loading bar, which means that when you come at the ramp, you can give it a little bit of throttle. The ramp isn't gonna go anywhere. The deck's not gonna go anywhere. It's all locked in together. No matter if you're loading one sled in the center like we are today, or you're sliding out the extendable sides to allow for two sleds, the ramp stays put and the drive up or down is safe and secure. We always recommend wearing a helmet and keeping consistent speed is a key as there is an angle at which the track has a little area of contact on the ground and can start to spin. So even speed towards the ramp and then up and onto the deck is key to safe and controlled loading of the sled. Because of the Superglide traction products, the sled can creep up should you become hesitant, and the skis are easily steerable and go where you point them, unlike raw aluminum deck surfaces that seem pretty slick. That was a great job, you did awesome. But the whole task isn't over yet. Now you gotta tie the thing down. But first of all, I wanna hear from you just how that went, because I know you were a little bit nervous. I was, I was totally nervous. It's funny because as I approached it, I felt my nerves kicking in, but once I got close to it, I just gave it a little bit of gas and then connected with the center and went right up. It was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. Because the Marlon Explore Pro 2 deck comes with super clamp ski tie downs that are so much quicker and easier than traditional strap systems, this part is really a snap, quite literally. The super clamp ski clamps allow for the rider to quickly and easily lock the sled onto the deck and not have to worry about frozen ratchet straps or proper strap placement. The sled is safe and secure in just a matter of seconds. Now we all know that winter riding doesn't necessarily end in sunlight. And if it's nighttime, Marlon's also got you covered with a smartly integrated lighting system. Because trying to load up anything in the dark isn't smart. Marlon has patented a light bar embedded into the rear loading bars, as well as bullet lights integrated into the rear headache rack that fill the front ski area with light so that you can get the job done. Add to this the integrated under deck bullet lighting that illuminates the cargo area and you can ride till it's pitch black and still get your sleds and gear packed up safely with ample lighting. Now many lesser grade decks will come with an all plywood base, but when it comes to the Marlon Explore Pro series of decks, they're 100% aluminum. And for us, it's well worth the investment. So you know that these decks are gonna stand up to the harsh winters, brutal road salt and general abuse that us sledders put stuff through because they're all aluminum. 
They're here for the long haul, four seasons, 12 months of the year. Now, when you add to this the Super Glide ski guides with the integrated traction cleats and the top of the deck, it isn't slippery or dangerous, but very easy to navigate when you're getting off your sled and coming down off the deck. The ramp, as mentioned earlier, is also fitted with the Super Glides, and stepping from the deck to the tailgate and down, or going right down the ramp, is easy and secure. Just because a sled deck looks a little bit intimidating doesn't mean that it is, and thanks to your help, I think we've proven that today, showing you that even a first-time sled deck user can load up a sled safely and confidently. And maybe from this point forwards, I'll just let you do all the work. Even though I know that I can, I'm probably good. I think so. <laughs> when Skidoo adorns one of their snowmobiles with the XRS acronym, it immediately becomes something more, much more than a mere mortal Skidoo. On this week's test ride, we're going to drill down on the 850 E-Tech Renegade XRS. The Renegade series of snowmobiles goes back to the early 00s when Skidoo lengthened the track on some specific models in an effort to make them appeal to what was then a tiny but persistent and emerging new market, the off-trail rider market. This humble beginning for the Renegade grew quickly as the clock wound into the mid 00s and Skidoo's amazing rev platform was offered early on as a 137. Fast forward to today and the question still remains to be answered if these Renegade buyers are actually using their longer track rides to access open terrain or maybe these buyers were attracted by the mogul bridging effect a longer skid produced. What is perfectly clear is this. Every year, 133s, then 137s were selling bigger and bigger. A couple years back, Skidoo made the bold move to separate the archetypical MXZ Renegade from the MXZ product line and make Renegade a brand unto itself. The reason? Renegade 137 sales were rivaling MXZ 121 sales. When Renegade became its own brand, more variants emerged year after year. And in the case of this test ride, the latest variant on the Renegade theme has been the intro of the Renegade XRS. Whenever Skidoo puts XRS on one of their snowmobiles, it sells like crazy. Over the years, we've been a little tough on the XRS moniker because it appeals to a prolific, rabidly enthusiastic group known as wannabes. Pretty clearly, those who ante up the considerable coin required to purchase an XRS do so to tap into an exclusive Skidoo genre and are usually among the top percentile of diehard Skidoo loyalists. It is comforting to know that this particular XRS Renegade is using 850 E-Tech power. If Renegade means off-trail capable, then that engine under this hood is going to get the job done. From a purely performance perspective, the 850 E-Tech delivers the goods. This engine is torquey right off engagement, lifting the skis and pointing them directly at the Sino down Kevlar Lake. The 850 E-Tech engine, now in its fourth year of production, has generated an iconic reputation for huge power and reliability. Its use in the Renegade XRS it makes great sense. Another indication of the XRS 850 Renegade's intended purpose is the inclusion of the slick KYB piggyback reservoir compression and rebound adjustable shocks. If you want these shocks, you gotta step up and get an XRS. These shocks are the real deal, providing more adjustment than anything Skidoo offers on lesser Renegade models. Frankly, if you're a hardcore ditch banger, there's tangible value in these shocks. If you're early ordering, we would hardly recommend you go for the running board mounted rear shock remote compression adjuster and the rear torsion spring preload adjuster. These two optional features are truly functional additions to any XRS Renegade. Because the XRS Renegade is a spring brake model only, the exclusivity of owning one of these is further enhanced. The coloration and graphics take this vehicle to near iconic status. Truth is, you can be a legend in your own mind. Here's something to consider. If you're after the cachet of the XRS, but intend to ride off trail just some of the time, you may want to consider the XRS Renegade. If you're looking at a Renegade with its 137 inch track as a mogul bridging device on rough trails, then the Turbo Renegade XRS is a good choice. A feature we applaud Skidoo for including on many of their 2020 sleds 
is a Camso Ice Ripper track in varying lug depths. Even though these small traction studs cannot equal the performance of aftermarket traction products, they do add a tangible measure of control and safety. For model year 2020, Skidoo has numerous XRS models throughout their prolific lineup. The XRS paradigm has clearly sunk in and gained traction with Skidoo buyers, despite the considerable MSRP uptick and XRS commands. Owning one of these top-of-the-line, exclusive, incomparable renegades is a tempting proposition for those who see the world as just a little bit yellow. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris Snowmobiles, MBRP Performance Exhaust, Race Inspired, Trail Proven, and by Hercules Tire, Ride on Our Strength. If you like what you've just seen, click the subscribe button and comment below. And make sure you check out all of our great videos on Snowtracks TV's YouTube channel.